I'm Shashwat. I hope you're all having a really great day. In this episode, I'll walk you through on how to make particles follow a path in Fusion. So let's get started. First, let's add the shape 3D node. You can choose any shape that you want. I'm using a sphere. We will be animating the sphere to create a path on which our particles will travel. So this is our path. Let's smooth this path in the spline editor. To do this in the spline editor, let's first select the shape 3D and the X, Y, Z offset. Then select all the keyframes. In the bottom left corner of the spline editor, click on the smooth icon. This will smooth out our curves. And this is what the path looks like. Now it's time to add our particles. Right click in the nodes window. Go to add tool, go to the particles tab and add the particle emitter. And then add two custom particle nodes and the particle render node. Now connect the particle emitter to the first custom particle node and so on to the render node. Now to make our particles follow the path, let's first add a background node. In the inspector, go to the image and change the width to 100. We are choosing 100 because one pixel in the background node represents one frame on the timeline. And since we have 100 frames, we need to set the width to 100. Let's set the height to 32 and change the depth to 32 bit float so that it can get the maximum color data. Now let's add the polygon node and change its width to 0.01 and height to 1. Now let's animate this polygon using an expression to make it move from left to right. Next we need to convert the XYZ coordinate of the shape into RGB value in the background node. To do that in the inspector go to modify and select the coordinate transform position modifier. Now to transfer the XYZ coordinate of the shape 3D to the background node Go to the Modifiers panel and drag and drop the Shape 3D node into the target object. This will translate the XYZ value into RGB value that we will later reference to create the path for our particles. Next add a Trail node. Connect the background node to the Trail node and reset the Trail node. Make sure that the timeline cursor is at the beginning then press play. This renders and translates the XYZ coordinates into RGB value image. Connect the trail node to the second custom particle node. You will notice that nothing happens when you press play. To move our particles, we need to animate them using expressions. So let's add some expressions. Now select the first custom particle node and in the inspector go to the particles tab. Scroll down to the mass area and add the random expression. This expression gives a random value between 0 and 1 to each particle. Now let's write some expressions for the second custom particle node. In the inspector go to the particle tab and in position x write get r 1 t. Get means to get something. R denotes the red value and 1 is of the first image. What this means is that we want to get the red value from our first image, that is our trail image. And D is to set the dimensions of that image. Next in the parenthesis, we type age, comma, mass. The age denotes the movement of the particles over a period of time. We can see the particles moving in the x-axis. Now let's copy this expression to the y and z position but replace the r with g and b that is green and blue respectively. Now we can observe our particles moving on a path. At the moment our particles are moving in a straight line so let's add some randomness to it. To do that after the get expressions, we'll type plus rand s. Here rand is the random value added to our particles and s is the seed. 
in the parentheses we'll type minus one comma one comma id the id stands for the id of the particles now let's copy this expression to the y and z positions and this is how the particle simulation looks like after adding the random expression next in the y position after the id type plus one and in z position after the id type plus two this will add some additional variation to the particles What we can also do is that we can control some of the properties of the particles. For example, we can change the offset of the particle as well as the thickness using the number sliders in the custom properties panel. To do so, after age type plus n1 and after random expression type multiply n2. The n1 and n2 stands for the number slider 1 and 2. Now when we move number 1 slider, we can change the offset of a particle and by moving number 2 slider, we can affect the thickness of our particles. Right now, our particles don't feel like it's moving forward in space. To do so, we'll use the fast noise node. So let's add the fast noise node. And in the image settings, change the width and height to 100. We can also change the depth to 32-bit float. Next, in the Noise tab, you can play around with the settings, but increase the contrast quite a lot. Lastly, change the X scale to 1.5 and Y scale to 15. This gives the fast noise a squashed look. Next, add the Channel Boolean node. In the Channel Boolean settings, change the Operation Type to Add and Alpha to Do Nothing since we don't need the Alpha values. Then connect the trails to the channel boolean and the fast noise as well. Next, connect the channel boolean to the second custom particle node. This is how the trail image looks like after the fast noise. Press play to see our particles moving forward on the path. There is another interesting thing we can do. We can add a blur node after the channel boolean. What it does is that when we move the blur size, we can smooth the path and the particles in it. And this is how a particle simulation looks like. If you want to affect how the particles themselves behave, you can go to the particle emitter node and change the particle settings. You can also replace the particles with an image or an image sequence to create a variety of effects. This is how you can make particles follow a path. I hope you found this interesting. Please do leave a feedback. Until then, see you.